Hello community, so great that you are back. Today we look at the interplay between knowledge graph enrichment by agents. So I have a practical problem. I do have a knowledge graph of all my AI literature. And daily I get about 400 to 800 new AI research paper. So this is now a problem because you know what I want to do? I don't want to build here daily new knowledge graph, but I simply want to update, to augment, to refine the knowledge the new knowledge and bring it over into my knowledge graph. Well, of course, I'm not working with 800, but this is here the main problem that I encounter and I would like to show you here the latest solution, the latest AI research for this. So let's open up here this video and let's see. If I want to bring it over to refine it, you know, we have options. And I know a lot of my colleagues that take note they have hundreds and thousands of little nodes or little pages or whatever they build, databases. Or if you want to have here a notebook LLM is beautiful. You can even generate podcasts and whatever. But you know, for me, I'm interested to build knowledge graph. Because knowledge graph are built from the reasoning traces here in a dynamic memory of our LLM. And what I love to do is have the knowledge graph, have all the specific subgraphs, and then an LLM can plan here on a graph the best actions for reasoning topics for robotics or also for complex reasoning. Or in the simplest case, I just take here a model like R1 and say, hey, R1 here, there's my knowledge graph with my particular preferences, with my particular way, how I reason, how I like to reason, what is important to me. Use this simple knowledge graph here to solve the specific query. So I can break it down to about 15 or 20 AI research paper that are really outstanding every day. And then I want to update here the knowledge graph. And you might say, hey, we don't need any Spark because this is simply straightforward. Yeah? We just take here the best performant reasoning model in mathematics. And we have four number one, O1, O3, DeepSeek, R1 and Gemini, flash syncing. Great. And then <laughs> say, hey, just read the new PDF files, including the graphs and the tables. And the AI should understand here the main new thematic topics and the new methodology. Then the AI should generate a short technical summary of the main implementation of each of every PDF. Then the AI should identify the existing knowledge graph nodes that are similar now to the new technical summary and extract the reasoning traces from the established knowledge graph and compare this to the reasoning, to the semantic reasoning of the new text summary, identify all overlaps and all contradictory triplets of the new text summary, calculate the probabilities for the correct reasoning traces, including new research, because the new research might contradict established knowledge that is already mapped to the knowledge graph, then the AI should simply delete specific reasoning traces in the knowledge graph and note, by the way, all dependencies because now we insert the new knowledge triplets into this augmented knowledge graph and then we have to validate the coherence and that all the dependencies are met. So we have to validate the thematic coherence of the new subgraphs that we just established and inserted into the knowledge graph. And then there are some other technical points. So you see, no problem at all. And you know what? If I do this to my absolute amazement, the performance is not there. The complexity of this, and these are already the first 10 points that the AI has to perform here to update my existing knowledge graph. This complexity is a rather little bit more on the complex side. So what do we do? We build an agent. Of course, it's February 2025. Hello, agents. So we have an AI agent. So which means we have an LLM, not just rule based or something. And we have memory and function calling everything that we need. And then we build specialized agent, yeah? multiple agents. Of course, no problem. Multi agent system are easy to learn. But now for my particular task to update here my knowledge graph with the new scientific publication, what is now the perfect number of AI agents? Because remember, it is not just the complexity of my task in science, but this also handles now new unseen research data, new unseen research terminology, new relations in those unseen data. And this is now, if even increases the complexity further. Now you might say, hey, no problem. In one of your last videos, you showed us topology DSPI, no? 
where we have multi-agent, and this is a simple mathematical optimization problem. We have three steps, one, two, three, you showed us here in the video. My goodness, this video was 30 minutes long. And there you said, hey, it's a simple mathematical problem, and the system will figure out here the perfect topology of all the agents, either they're in a linear chain or they're in an interconnected chain, and then we evaluate it, and we have the perfect topology for the multi-agent system. And you were absolutely right. So let's come now to the core new idea. We will build agents. And we will build agents now not for the complete complexity, but for subtasks that have a lower complexity, so that it is much easier and the performance is higher. So at first, we have to retrieve all the raw documents, normally PDF or HTML. Then we split the documents in sections, score the segments that are relevant using the knowledge graph context, and simply filter out all the non-relevant context. We condense here the text segment into summaries while we preserve here the complete entity relationship manifolds. And, you know, entity extraction agents, they identify the entities via few short LLM prompts, normalize them to knowledge graph canonical forms using our ontology-guided embedding alignment. But of course, we need also the relationship, no? What does it cause? What is the base? So we have a relationship extraction agent between the entity pairs using now multi-label classification because it is so much more fun if we have multi-label classification allowing now for overlapping relations. Well, we want to align now our schema, of course, to the knowledge graph schema. So we have a schema alignment agent map novel entities or relation to the knowledge graph schema or flag them for a complete ontology expansion, which is really interesting. But the next two agents are really important. We will have conflicts, because I will put in new research data that might create a conflict, might have complete new ideas, go against established knowledge. So we need a conflict resolution agent. Yeah? It resolves here the contradictions here via LLM, that LLM now starts to communicate, start to have a discussion, a debate here about it, and an evidence aggregation. And our last agent is an evaluator. Because everything what we have done until now should be evaluated before it becomes a ghost that propagates you through our pipelines. So, we have an evaluator agent, computed integration confidence, using here weighted signals like a confidence, the relevance, a clarity, a coherence, and whatever we'd like to have. And here we have it now, finally. So what is the perfect number of agents? Nine. And you might say, hey, we showed up eight. Yeah, but I need, of course, for the simplest multi-agent case, a central controller. So there we have it. We have nine agents with an LLM at its core, and they are now given dedicated tasks. So how do we build those specialized agents? How do I build them? Now, let's come here to the beautiful facts of a new research. And they are done here, this research is done here by Biomedical AI College of Future Technology, Peking University. And they have here a new methodology for automated knowledge graph enrichment. They define all those eight beautiful agents. They go here in the simplest case with a central controller. But yeah, I know in my last video I was talking about self-learning AI systems. But unfortunately, this one here, this one here, no, this is a hierarchical system because it is the simplest system. So let's start with the simplest system and then, yeah, if you want, we can have a peek preview to self how we integrate now self-learning into those systems. Yeah, we need data. No, we have to have a data set. This is easy. The orders said, hey, we go with genomics, proteomics, and metabolomics. We have everything in a PDF format. And this is about 1,200 scientific papers. And if you start fresh, and if you do not have a knowledge graph already established, from this, just to give you a feeling for this, 1,200 scientific papers, they could define 38,000 separate entities. Technical terms, relation, whatever. So let's, let's start now. The first question is, of course, hey, what central intelligence will we use? Now, the authors did a lot of experiment here with a single age and a real small LLM, a GPT-4 Omni or the DeepSeq. And it turns out DeepSeq is just beautiful for this task. So we have now specialized agents, nine, 
And in the heart of every little agent, we have a DeepSeq version 3 LLM that has all the intelligence to make decisions, to have your prediction what's going to happen now, simply deciding on the next actions. And I know what you ask. You say, but how do we build those specialized agents now that we have how we construct them, but wow, we, how we code them? Well, here's the prompt for the first agent. You see, it's so simple. You have title, a role description, the system instruction, what is going to happen, how you do error handling. Then you have the LLM prompt template in an example. Then you have a sample input and a sample output given. But notice this is here for the PubMed. This is really domain specific. You can either do this once here manually or you use either DSPy or DexRed or whatever you like. Then we go to the next agent here. This is simply the reader agent. You see, we have an input and output. You have some scoring heuristic. You have here the prompt template, the sample input, sample output. So we go on. Here we have the summarizer agent. This is here the complete prompt that they used here in this example here, the authors for the entity extraction agent, domain specific. Then we have the relationship extraction agent, you know, the edges that we need. Then we have the schema alignment plus the conflict resolution agent. Here you can improve as you like for your particular theoretical problems. Plus we have now the first prompt where we have an evaluation and we go here with the evaluator agent prompt for the confidence parameter. So whatever is important in your domain, be aware. And then you simply give here an example that you have here, you enable the LLM, that it could give you a value between zero or one or very good or very bad. You need here somehow this course. We do the same for the evaluator now on clarity and on the relevance, given that we already have a knowledge graph. And only if those parameters are above a certain threshold, we will accept it. Now, you know, at this point, I ask myself, hey, normally I work with two or three agents. And now I said, hey, do we really need all those nine AI agents? You know, it's not that uh, non-expensive. Yeah? Well, R1 is open source, so this is a beautiful thing. Yeah? Very powerful in its reasoning capabilities. But... The authors also seem to have the same idea because they did some tests. They said, okay, if we go with here with the full version, but what if we leave out just one of the agent, the summarizer? What if we leave out just the conflict resolution agent? What if we leave out the evaluator agent? What happens to the performance in the genomics, in the proteomics, in metabolomics data? And here you see for two parameter this here just is the LLM-based correctness parameter, and this is question and answer coherence parameter. And they calculated this. And you see, each and every agent is valuable. Now, the jumps are, you can see, significant or not significant. If you go from 0 0.8 to 0 0.7 or 0 0.79, but you know, it has an effect. And they did this for all the other agents and they really found, hey, this is something to get the best performance. So if you're really budget limited, you have here an indicator what agent you might be not so that you have to integrate it. But otherwise, you see, sometimes you go from 0 0.77 to 0 0.63 or 0 0.66. So I would recommend it really in the beginning, you go with all the agent and then you can try to switch off one agent and see about the performance of your system if you really have to reduce here on the budget. Wasn't this simple? Wasn't this beautiful? I never thought that I would do my next update of my knowledge graph with nine EI agents. I thought two or three are enough. Well, I was wrong and I learned and I hope that you learned from my mistakes. So what we did, let's have a short summary here. So I reduced the complexity of the overall task that I showed you with all the bullet points here by creating here less complex subtasks. And for each subtask, we employed now an AI agent. We defined a specialized agent. We defined a prompt. We 
can go with prompt engineering, DSPy, whatever you like, and get the optimal prompt that are for this specialized domain-specific agent. You have domain adaptive prompts. And then you have those agents, and there will be conflict. So you have to provide a solution so that the agent can debate and have a conflict resolution schema. It can be a very simple one. You can go crazy on this, but those are important topics to be above a certain threshold. So you have multi-agent verification and cross-agent validation. Just notice that if you work with science and you know that whenever you open a new AI research paper, you have new technical terms. You have at least here the methodology is given a particular name, like Sirius or whatever. So you do have an extended vocabulary sometimes and you get new relationship types because we discover new dependencies. Now, those agents can be periodically retrained which is really recommended here after, let's say, a month or maybe some weeks, or the prompt updates to handle new emerging entities. You have new drug classes or whatever you have. Plus, you will get more complex multimodal relationship. So we have to build this system that it is able to grow, to increase its complexity, but the system structure must be able to provide here a way to receive high-performant answers. So modular structure of the prompt eases here the integration of these updates because now we can simply go and pick one or two agents, update just one of the nine agents, or maybe we have to update three agents that are related to each other. But you can you see I don't have to do here the complete system update where I do not know if I have nine agents, which of those agents goes first in the update, what the dependencies, and so on. So here we are now, and you might say here at the end of this video, do we have an outlook here? Yes, of course, because we found here a new hierarchical multi-AI agent system. And you might say, hey, this is great. But you know, the boss of this system here, the central intelligence, the central command, we have to train those agents on training data. So we have to provide this agent a lot of training data where I showed it. Hey, for this problem, look, this was the best solution. Step 1, 5, 7, 15. So we have to create a lot of synthetic training data for this controlling agent that controls now eight other sub-agents. The quality of this synthetic data, especially if you have eight sub-agents, is not yet established here to a degree where I would say, hey, I'm satisfied with the quality. So, of course, what would be great, we just give it here, I don't know, 10, 20 ideas, and then we say, hey, system, are you able to develop a self-learning algorithm? Can you bootstrap here yourself here from the very few examples given? And you develop a self-learning methodology in this AI system that consists of nine, now then eight agents? Think about it. You have eight DeepSeek or one communicating and learning at the same time just to increase here the quality of your knowledge graph. I'm absolutely fascinated by this idea. And yes, I have to go and try it out. And if you are maybe, I don't know, could be theoretically that you are interested in this kind of videos, hey, why not subscribe?